compiled 100 tips and tricks for the finals and put them all in this one video. From the best settings, gameplay advice, and secret techniques you never knew before. We will cover it all in this one video and without wasting any time, tip 1. You probably already know that you can activate these buttons by clicking your interact key. But you can also activate the buttons by shooting them. You can double up on a cash out. If you take both of the vaults to the same cash out, it will double the reward. I highly recommend this when your team is in the lead and you're playing a tournament and you don't want to give two different teams the opportunity to pass you up and knock you out. Now this next tip is the most overpowered thing in the game right now. If you aren't taking advantage of this, you are missing out on a lot of free kills. Attach breach charges to throwable, preferably the red or the green ones. Then throw the canister at an enemy and blow it up. This will deal massive damage and can instant kill enemies. This also works with mines, but it slows down the speed of throwing so it isn't quite as effective. You can destroy buildings simply by shooting them. It does take a while, but if you have your entire team shooting the same spot, it can be done much faster. There is a technique called window hopping that allows you to scale buildings by climbing up the window. All you need to do is look up, walk backwards out of the window, then hold down your forward input and immediately jump and mantle. And window hopping helps you be unpredictable as most enemies expect you to be walking up the stairs. But if you absolutely have to take the stairs, there is a trick to take them much faster. All you need to do is go to around the center of the staircase, then jump, do a 180, and repeat. It will take some practice to get this down consistently, but it is a lot faster than running up the stairs. If you shoot a gas canister once, it will blow up exactly 15 seconds later. I find this super useful. Just throw a canister at the cash out, shoot it once, run away. Enemies will go steal it. They'll try to steal it at least, and it'll blow up, and you get the free elimination. Always be prepared to melee in a close range gunfight. A lot of the time, especially with weapons like the F car or the light classes shotguns, the enemies are low HP, and you run out of ammo. Being prepared to melee will help you get that last little bit of damage and secure the elimination. Learn the recoil patterns of your favorite weapon. All you need to do is go to the firing range and shoot into a wall without controlling recoil. This is going to show you the recoil pattern and to control the recoil, all you need to do is move your aim in the opposite direction. Place your jump pad on goo to control the angle you want it placed. And if you want to take high ground as a heavy player, you don't have that many movement options, but one thing that you can do is jump and shoot your goo gun at your feet. This will allow you to build a goo tower. Definitely not as good as a jump pad, but heavy players don't really have any other options. You could also make a goo bridge to help you get around the map. If you throw a dome shield at an enemy, they can't shoot out of it, forcing them to either move or shoot it down. The healing beam cancels out gas damage, so it is a great counter to gas nades and gas mines. If you use the dome shield, there is no doubt there's been a time where you threw it down and it slid away from where you want it. To stop this from happening, all you have to do is right click or use the left trigger from controller to underhand throw it. And this will stop it from sliding away. If you shoot the bottom of a goo tower, every other piece will be destroyed with it. If you're in the lead, run away with the vault money so nobody else can start a cash out and force overtime. Make sure you have enemy team colors turned on so you can see exactly which team you're fighting. Max out your field of view. With a lower field of view, you will quite literally see less of what's going on. Turning up your FOV will allow you to see much more. And you will catch some enemies on the edges of your screen that you never would have seen on a low FOV. Change up your keybind. The problem with the default keybind is that you constantly have to move your fingers off of your movement keys so you can actually use your ability. You want to switch it around so you can click use your abilities without having to do much of anything. If you're wondering, this is what I'm using, but it all comes down to what you're used to at the end of the day. Use the goo gun to block off jump pads and slow down the enemies. Mines have a distinct ticking sound. Always be listening for the sound so you don't run into any on accident and get yourself eliminated. To win the match, kills are not very important. If you want to climb the ranks and win your matches, you need to play the objective and use abilities and teamwork that help win the objective. If there is anything obstructing a player's trophy, you can't use a defibrillator on them. This includes random material on the maps and enemy shields. This next tip will help you eliminate recoil on your gun. This trick is called recoil smoothing. To do this, all you have to do is strafe in one direction while pulling your aim in the opposite direction. This will almost completely completely take away the recoil on your gun. Every time you start the vault, you earn $1,000. And every time you start a cash out, you earn $2,000. This extra bit of money could help push your team into the lead during those close matches. If you run slide onto a jump pad, it will take you further than simply running into the pad. And if you combine it with the next tip, you can go even further. Bunny hopping. So bunny hopping allows you to keep a bit of your momentum after using movement abilities like jump pads or grappling hooks. All you need to do is hold down your sprint input and hit jump every time you hit the ground. And if you want some solid aim, focus on your crosshair placement. Crosshair placement is simple. All it is is having a crosshair position where an enemy is likely to pop out. It seems obvious, but you would be surprised at how many players run around with a crosshair glued to the ground or some random wall. Fire like the pyro grenades or red canisters takes away gas, and then smoke nades or gray canisters will take away fire. And you could also use thermal vision to see through smoke, making the smoke grenade and thermal vision an underrated setup for the light class. Make sure you destroy the zip lines that lead to the cash out you're defending. This will make it much more difficult for 
for the enemies to get to you and will help kill some time while you're defending. And if you want to destroy the zip lines from the bottom, all you have to do is shoot or melee this little metal piece. And most importantly, if you're finding this video helpful or entertaining, drop a like and subscribe. You can bounce throwables off of jump pads. This will help you get the mines further than just throwing it normally. Also, you can throw grenades off these type of pads to help clear the other end before you take it. You can set goo on fire. It's an easy counter to any team locking up a building with goo. And it's also one of the examples for why you need to follow the next tip. Have a reserve loadout to counter the enemies. You can't change it mid-game and ranked, but you can between rounds. You can destroy the lights and buildings to make it darker. Not sure if it would be of any real benefit, but it's definitely interesting to know. Gas works through walls and floors. This comes in handy when you know a team is camping in a building. Just throw a gas grenade on the roof or one of the walls and force them to change up their position. Alternatively, you can follow the next tip. Shoot your mines to make them go off early. I find this really useful in last second plays when you want to add a lot of visual clutter to the enemy screen. And then also, activating the mines yourself prevents the enemies from destroying them using their glitch grenade. Back to movement. You need to be air strafing. Air strafing allows you to move in different directions in the air. To do this, all you need to do is hold your sprint input, W, and either A or D, while also slowly turning your aim in the direction you want to go. For controller players, put your left thumbstick up to the left or the right while air strafing. You can destroy ladders simply by shooting them. I find it very good against heavy players since they have limited mobility and are forced to use ladders quite often. Use the sledgehammer to quickly destroy buildings to make openings for your team to use. The sledgehammer also helps with the next tip. You can completely destroy bridges. This forces enemies to get across another way and usually they will be easy targets. The cash out takes two minutes, but you will rarely ever hold it for that long. Instead, wait for the final moments and then steal the cash out so the enemies won't have time to steal it back. If you are ever in the situation where a team is all sitting in a building defending the cash out, instead of jumping in and fighting them, you can throw an explosive at the floor underneath and it will drop the cash out to your floor and force the enemies to change up their strategy. For the light class, the best weapons in my opinion are the SH-1900 and the XP-54. For the medium class, the best weapon has to be the AKM. You could make the argument that if you hit all your shots, the F card is better. But with a small magazine capacity, it feels much less consistent. Then for the heavy class, the best weapons are the Lewis gun and the SA-1216. Of course, it does depend on which weapons you are good with. These are the weapons that the majority of the player base is finding success with. Melee, gas, and fire canisters before throwing them to ensure they are blown up after they are thrown. If you melee the powder canisters, it will create smoke directly where you are. Then if you melee the explosive canisters, it will launch it in the direction you are facing. If you aren't playing heavy, I suggest playing away from the objective and looking for angles onto your enemies they won't be expecting. If you play on the objective as a medium or a light, it is so easy for them to use your utility and eliminate you. Underhand throw grenades so they land closer and don't bounce away. You can use placeables like turrets or glue to help climb up buildings. You can put jump pads on an angle to quickly bounce towards or away from enemies. Use jump pads to block doors, windows, the end of zip lines, or just force enemies to shoot it, revealing their position. Use pyro grenades or the fire canisters to light the forest on fire in the monocle map. The fire will spread and oftentimes it causes enemies to panic and make mistakes. Heavier classes can throw things further. So if you really want to chuck a vault across a map, hand it to a heavy and they can launch it pretty far. Sprinting also helps you throw things further. So no matter what class you're playing, if you're trying to throw things as far as possible, make sure you're sprinting first. Place mines around enemy statues to make it difficult for the enemies to revive. But then if you are the last player alive on your team and you can't seem to get a revive off, hide somewhere until one of your teammates is able to use a revive coin so you can avoid getting team wiped. When you use the defibrillator to revive a teammate, they will come back with about half health. So if you have the healing beam, make sure you heal them right away. Then if your heavy teammate is dealing the cash out last second, you should also heal them so they can tank the incoming damage. If it's a light or medium player stealing the cash out, I find it's usually better to shoot for them rather than heal. Then if you find a team that is constantly using heal beams or shields, throw a glitch grenade at them and they should be much easier to eliminate. The cloaking device has a distinct sound to it. And an audio cue whenever the player leaves invisibility. So if you know you're against a player using the cloaking device, make sure you're constantly listening for it. You can't really move much while reviving or stealing a cash out. But the one thing that you can do is crouch spam. The benefit to crouch spamming is that it makes it much harder for enemies to hit headshots on you, which will allow you to survive just a slight bit longer if you're getting shot at. Only the light and medium players can get through these small vent things, so if you're running away from a heavy player, make sure you take advantage of them. If you're still having a problem with the heavy players, make sure you follow the next tip. Anytime a heavy with an RPG, a shotgun, or a grenade launcher gets close to you, use vertical movement abilities like jump pads and grappling hooks to create distance between you and them. If you are in the air, it forces the heavy player to either go for a direct hit with your RPG or nade launcher or completely miss you. You can bring down these floating buildings. All you need to do is break two of the hooks that are next to each other and it will come crashing down. If you really want to be the best player you can be in the finals, you need to be playing every class so you can get a feel for their weaknesses and how to counter them. Place a jump pad right under or next to the cash out to make it difficult to steal. Enemies can always shoot and destroy it, but every second it counts in this game and those 
those extra bullets could cost them the game. Don't always carry the vault money. A lot of the time, you'll be an easy kill since the enemies will know exactly where you are. And honestly, most of the time, if other teams are nearby, I will go straight to the cash out area and wait for the enemies to come to me and take them out. Crouching extends your reach. If you want to pick up something far away or steal a cash out with a little bit more distance, make sure you crouch first. Then if you aren't sure if you are close enough to pick something up, make sure you follow the next tip. Look for the blue glow. If you are in range with something that you can pick up, it will glow blue. As you can see here, I am standing and I don't get the glow, but as soon as I crouch, I can grab it. Turn up the dialogue volume in your settings so you can hear important callouts by the announcer. The announcers oftentimes tell you there's only one player left in a team, so you know you should be hunting them down to get the team wipe. You can control elevators by clicking these buttons, and you can also control the cranes by using their buttons. Use your grappling hook at the ground and then immediately jump to get a quick dash. Whenever you are jumping off an object or building, slide right at the edge to get a speed boost. The closer the cash out is to finishing, the closer the spawns will be. Whenever you see a bright shining light, these are the snipers aiming down their sights at you. Use cover and try to close the distance so you can take them out. Every kill is an extra $200. So if the game is really close, go for some extra kills and it might just be what you need to win the match. If you were wondering when the enemies are going to respawn, you can actually see the respawn timer in the top left. If you want to level up the battle pass quickly, don't forget to do your daily and weekly challenges, as these will be quick and easy ways to get XP. You make multiple different contestants, you can easily switch between specializations without needing to edit them every single time. Always try to play to your strength, and this is why I don't play with shotguns or snipers very often. It's not that they're bad, I'm just not good with them myself, and I get much more value using other weapons. Play around enemy trophies so they are not able to get the revive off. They will be forced to either get team wiped or use their token. This next tip, I had to learn the hard way. You can't open doors while you're stunned, and the best thing you do 90% of the time is to just shoot back. Light players only have 150 health, so even after getting stunned, there's a lot of times where you can still win the gunfight. If you attach goo to a turret, and then you take down the turret, it will take down the goo with it. Always warm up before playing ranked so you can be at your best. I personally recommend the Bank at Game Mode for warming up because you can get into a lot of gunfights and you don't need to wait so long to respawn. I was surprised a lot of players didn't know this, but you can put multiple weapons in your reserve. Don't put flashy skins on mines. Yes, they look cool, but the whole point of mines are to catch the enemies off guard. If they stand out, then it sort of defeats the entire purpose. Use your ping more often. As long as you keep line of sight with the enemy you ping, it will directly follow them, making it full on wall hacks for your teammates. If you have a heavy with a mesh shield on your team. Have them go on the zipline first. This is because they can hold their shield and protect the team. When a cloaked player takes damage, it forces them out of their invisibility. This makes throwing gas grenades at doorways really strong as they have no way of getting through. The evasive dash will take you in whatever direction you are looking. You can even look straight up when you dash and get to hard to reach places quickly. If you want the enemies to spawn further away, wait for them to respawn before putting the vault money into the cash out. As soon as you start the cash out, they will spawn closer. As a medium player, when you have to get across the map fast, switch to the zipline. Especially if you have two medium players, one can be on zipline and the other can have a jump pad. You can place turrets on objects. I'm not sure if this would ever be useful, but it's fun to do and you can show it off to your friends. Now, something that you should try to never do is take zip lines or ladders in front of your enemies. These force you into a predictable path and makes you an easy target for anyone who sees you. Have a dedicated three stack if possible. The finals is a team game and without any team play, you're putting yourself at a massive disadvantage. Find two other players you enjoy playing with and try to queue up with them whenever possible. But then you need to make sure you are using the best loadout possible so you aren't holding yourself back. And if you want to find out which loadouts you should be using, check out this video up on the screen now. Thanks for watching. Let me know if there are any other tips I haven't mentioned in this video.